Hello and welcome to Moody Blooms. Thanks so much for joining us. Today we are going to be discussing the devil. I mean, mealybugs. The same thing, right? They are disgusting little buggers to a lot of different plants. Mealybugs are like the plague. They spread rapidly from plant to plant and it can be very difficult to get rid of them. There are approximately 275 species of these gross mealybugs throughout the United States. They're closely related to whiteflies, aphids, and scale insects, and are often found in the presence of ants, as ants feed on the honeydew that mealybugs produce. If you see a lot of ants around your plants, be sure to inspect for mealybugs. The mealybugs that you see on your plants are actually females. Male mealybugs can fly, are rarely seen, and only live a short period of time. They do not feed, and their only job is to fertilize the female. Adult female mealybugs have soft bodies, which range from a tenth of an inch to a quarter inch in length, and they are wingless. Mealybugs attach themselves to the plant where they will secrete a powdery, waxy coating. So gross. This is used for protection and also to lay their eggs in. Adult female mealybugs lay 200 to 600 eggs, depending on their species. They lay the eggs in cottony egg sacs over a 10 to 20 day period. Thankfully, the females die shortly after all the eggs are laid. Unfortunately, they leave behind countless disgusting babies. Hatching occurs within one to three weeks and the small yellow nymphs are active early on. They move very little once a suitable feeding site is found. The nymphs are also known as crawlers. They secrete honeydew and the crawlers will also start to form the waxy coating over their body. They'll develop into adults in about one to two months. The mealybugs pierce the surface of the host plants to find sap and they suck the nutrients from the host. So gross. There can be several generations of mealybugs and their life cycles can overlap, meaning that once they get started, the population can grow very quickly. They seriously are the devil and I'm getting goosebumps just talking about them. Now, mealybug damage isn't always significant at low pest levels. Sometimes you don't even know that they're there. However, at higher numbers, they can cause withering, curling, or yellowing leaves as a plant weakens. It can also cause deformed leaves, as shown here, and can also cause stunted growth. If you see deformed leaves like these, thoroughly inspect your plants because there is a really good chance of a mealybug infestation. If an infestation is left untreated, the plant will eventually die, although it will usually take a long time before them to kill a plant. The honeydew substance that mealybugs exude promotes growth of black sooty fungus on the surface of leaves, inhibiting photosynthesis. So keep an eye out for that as well. Since the eggs and nymphs are so small, it takes a while for the population to become large enough to be noticeable. Most people don't discover mealybugs on their houseplants or succulents until after the population explodes. As soon as you notice mealybugs on your succulents, immediately quarantine them far away from the rest of your plants. Depending on the severity of the infestation, you may even want to treat any plants and all plants in the vicinity. So how do we control mealybugs? Well, there's a couple different ways that I like to treat mealybugs and other pests. A few bugs can be treated with Q-tips dipped in rubbing alcohol, although be sure you don't miss any eggs or nymphs. Mealybugs are soft-bodied insects and their protection is the white cottony covers. Alcohol dissolves that and kills them instantly. For light infestation, I suggest an effective spray mixture made up of one part water, one part 70% isopropyl alcohol, and one to two drops of Dawn dish soap. Some suggest spraying the straight alcohol onto the plant directly, but in the past I've had some issues with some damage, so I suggest diluting it or use full strength with caution until you know what plants respond well to it. The combination of alcohol and soap is highly effective and works well in eliminating mealybugs. Since mealybugs are good at hiding in hard to reach places, you'll likely need to do multiple applications of the rubbing alcohol spray before they're all killed. Even if you don't see any more mealybugs, it's a good idea to do a few more applications just in case there are some lingering bugs. If the plant looks healthy and you don't see any more mealybugs on it, they're most likely gone. The alcohol can leave a thin white layer on the leaves of succulents when the alcohol dries, so sometimes it's better to schedule your treatment when it's time to water the plants so you can rinse it off with some water. 
Now my new favorite solution that I'm super excited to share with you today has been working really well for me over the past five months. I wanted to give it a thorough try before I shared it with you. I have been using the Safer Insecticidal Soap. I have tons of plants and it has been a challenge trying to control the evil mealybugs. This works fast on heavy infestations. It kills soft-bodied insects like mealybugs as well as aphids, spider mites, scale, and white flies. It works by damaging their outer layer, causing dehydration and death within hours. It is gentle enough to spray directly onto your plants and has no stinky odor. It is definitely more gentle to my plants than alcohol. Another bonus is that it is compliant for use in organic gardening, and it is safe to use around children and pets. The potassium salts and fatty acids are derived from the natural acids found in animal fats and plant oils. This solution breaks down into its natural elements within seven to 10 days, leaving no residual impact on the environment. So that's awesome. I like to apply the soap in the early morning or late evening to reduce drying times for more effective pest control. I apply with a pest sprayer like this one, but I also use a spray bottle as well. I like to keep a spray bottle handy at all times. Links to the insecticidal soap and the pump pressure sprayer that I love can be found in the description below. I purchased the concentrate version as it is less expensive, but you can certainly buy it in a pre-mixed spray bottle. With the concentrate, I use two and a half ounces for every gallon of water, and that seems to work just fine. A lot of people are really happy using neem oil as it disrupts the growth and development of pests and has repellent and anti feedant properties. I personally have not used it only because there are a lot of conflicting reports about bees and neem oil, and bees are so important. Apparently the neem oil must be ingested in order for it to be toxic to the bees, so definitely avoid spraying on flowers and please be sure to follow the instructions on the label. Now one application of neem oil probably won't kill all the mealybugs. Because mealybugs have a rapid life cycle, you'll need to routinely kill the newly hatched bugs every week until the mealybugs have been killed off. I know, it's so gross. So how do we avoid mealybugs altogether? Well, the best thing you can do when you buy new plants or get succulent cuttings from a friend is to carefully inspect them. Never introduce a mealybug infested plant to your precious garden or the infestation will spread to your other plants. If you find mealybugs on your new plant, pick them off or squish them dead like I do and dispose of them. Next, do your alcohol or insecticidal soap treatments the moment you notice some infestations. Make sure it is completely free of bugs before you mix them with other plants. Also, try not to overwater your plants. By doing so, you are encouraging lots of soft spots for mealybugs to munch on, and we certainly don't want that. Also, avoid over-fertilizing your plants. High levels of nitrogen can cause mealybugs to reproduce faster. If your plants don't need a nitrogen fertilizer, use a non-nitrogen fertilizer instead. Another question I get a lot is if mealybugs are harmful to humans. Mealybugs do not bite humans, although coming into contact with these little devils can sometimes cause skin irritation. The sticky residue mealybugs leave behind can be hard for you to remove from your clothing. Wash your hands and clothing after coming into contact with mealybugs to avoid any potential impact. Really the only harm mealybugs pose to humans is to your wallet. Well, and to your heart too, because nobody wants their precious plant babies dying from disgusting mealybugs, right? Another plant pest is fungus gnats. You can water your plant with a mixture of one part hydrogen peroxide and four parts water. The solution will kill the larva, but it is harmless to your plant. The hydrogen peroxide will fizz, and that's what kills the larva and the eggs. Reapply the hydrogen peroxide solution once a week until you see the fungus gnats are gone. You can also place those little yellow sticky traps near the infested plant. I hope you all learned something new today and I really hope that if you have an active mealybug infestation that you can eradicate it quickly with these tips. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to hear from you what works for your pests in the comment section below as well as any questions you may have. Have a wonderful day and thanks for joining us on Moody Blooms.